Okay. Hey guys. How's it going? Good. Going good? Fantastic. Thursday. And uh, I'm really only going to take about 20 minutes today. We're going to finish uh, module 19. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. So tomorrow what's going to happen is um, those people are going to get a review sheet handed out to them, and they're going to have the hour to study. And you guys will be at home. And you can study because the test is on Monday and Tuesday. Fudge. Fudge. Now, I don't know if you notice anything up here. Thank you. Now, I already had one student turn it in. That person's like a heady. Well, over here. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you still don't have a freaking book. There's some right there. Any one of those will work. Grab it, read it, go. I tell you guys, I was, uh, this is comedy class I've been taking. Huh? Comedy in the classroom? You've never gotten any of that? So I had to do a comic strip this week. I made this this week. So seniors, I'm checking, I'm going to be checking the books you've chosen for your history book review project. Remember, students, your book must be from 20th century American history. That's for those of you that asked to read something from another country. Jack, I believe you're up first. Well, Mr. Abright, I was able to borrow my book from my sister. This ought to be interesting. It's a book about space race. It's called Curious George and the Rocket. Jack, that's not going to happen. I have just the book picked out for you. Oh, no. It's a wonderful 600-page biography by another George, George Pat. Grab it off my desk. There you go. You don't have a book yet. Take one of those. That's all I got. Hopefully, I get an A. But it's a good way to explain the uh, parameters of the assignment. Okay. Be here the rest of the week. So I did this one, uh, this slide, uh, the last session, just to kind of recap on it. Um, guys, the election of 36, so Roosevelt has been president for four years, okay? And you know the New Deal. I mean, well, if you don't, you better. Um, and, you know, some people, it, you know, it, might, it seems like it had worked some. Industrial production was up, farm income was up, weekly wages were up, unemployment was down. Okay? The depression is not over. But things are better for a lot of people. Okay? So the Republicans have very little chance of winning here. By zero. Okay? So they put up the governor of Kansas. Alf Landon. Okay? There's a 70, uh, 1970 sitcom called Alf. You guys seen? It's like this little puppet Martian thing. Yeah, uh, it's weird. But anyhow, um, any guys going to K State? Okay. So every year at K State, they have what's called the Landon Lecture Series, named after Governor Landon, and they bring in somebody famous to speak to the student body, the faculty, and go watch. You know, they'll bring in a Secretary of State or something like that to talk to the to the student body. It's a pretty cool deal. So every now and then you'll hear about the Landon Lecture Series up there at K-State, okay? Um, now, it's hard to criticize the New Deal because people are desperate. And Roosevelt's giving people jobs. He's giving them hope. He's giving them something. How do you criticize that? How do you criticize Social Security? No, we're not going to help the old people when they retire. We're not going to help the unemployed, okay? How do you criticize that? It's difficult. So the Republicans didn't, and they got wiped out. Poor Alf Landon didn't even win his home state of Kansas. 
He won Maine and Vermont. This is what you would call a landslide. Yes? Now, not the biggest landslide in American history. Okay? Because two presidents, well, George Washington was elected unanimously, so. But Nixon, 72, won 49 states. Reagan, in 84, won 49 states. Okay? Isn't that hard to, I mean, hard to believe? Like today, it just feels like that would never happen again. You know what I mean? Unless one of the two parties put up a really bad camp. Nah, never mind. <laughs> right? So, um, and, and remember, guys, there, there was a lot of people that felt like democracy had failed, that capitalism had failed. And so you had a socialist candidate, Norman Thomas. This guy ran for president, I think, like four times. Uh, there was a Communist Party candidate, a Union Party candidate, and, um, you know, so those those people received a sub substantial amount of votes, but as you know from government, you got to win 51% of a state to get any electoral college vote. So they didn't get any of those. Okay. So uh, moving forward, this is 36, all right? What we're going to see with this election, this is the first time that Democrats will control both houses of the Congress since before the Civil War. Okay, so this is a big deal. I mean, it's been since 1866, 1936. Republicans had controlled one or both of the houses. All right, um, this is in, in politics. This is referred as, to as having coattails. So hopefully, guys, we have a prom this this spring. Okay, for you guys and. Some of the guys will dress up in tuxedos, all right? And I know when I was a senior in high school back in 1986, the tux I got, I got tails. You know what I mean? Tails on my tux. And in a presidential election, when a president is so popular that he elects, helps elect a bunch of people from the same party, in this case, the Democratic Party, Roosevelt is going to bring all those people in to Congress on his coattail. Does that make sense? So he had coattails. All right. Now, Roosevelt had bought, I mean, won a lot of new friends with the New Deal. And we start to see groups of people that vote heavily Democrat. Urban areas, farmers, blue-collar workers, laborers, teachers, social workers, immigrants, and African Americans. And you could add to this list Catholics. Okay, if your great grandparents were Catholics, there's a good chance they were Democrats. Okay, Catholics started to turn against the Democratic Party about the same time the South went to the Republican Party, which is the late 80s, early 90s. Catholics started to move away from the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party started to move away from them. Okay, now today, as we talked about in government class, really the more religious you are, the more if you attend mass every week, that sort of thing, you tend to be more Republican. Same thing with Protestants. If you go to church every week, you tend to be more conservative. Okay, fall away Catholics and so forth tend to be more democratic. So you have a lot of those in this country. And so what's the split? It, it's close to 50-50. Maybe 60, 40 Republican, 40% Democrat for Catholics. It, it depends on the candidate, okay? okay? Joe Biden's Catholic. I don't know if you know that, right? You guys know that? So he's our second Catholic president. Okay. Yeah. He's caught some flack for some of his beliefs, right? Okay. So, um, anyway. Now, this is interesting. Look at this. When we say African Americans start voting for the Democratic Party, think about this, guys. The South is the solid South for the Democrats. Okay? Now, blacks started to move, migrate to the North during this time period, during the Depression, for work. And especially during World War II, we see a great, great migration of blacks. And they will move to the cities in the North, Cleveland, Ohio. Philadelphia, Chicago, 
even in places like Wichita, Kansas. Okay. So what's interesting here, guys, which party is the party of the KKK? From the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s of the 20th century, 19, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. No, 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 the Republican Party is the party of Lincoln that abolished slavery. The Democrat Party is the party of the Klan. Okay? But you have African Americans voting for Democrats. Now, in the South, the African American vote was oppressed. Suppressed, yes, with poll taxes and stuff like that, intimidation, fear, okay? But in the North, you had blacks voting for the Democratic Party, which is interesting. They're voting again, they're voting for the party that supports the Klan. Why? It's an interesting thing to think about. Why? Did any of you guys read uh, in government class the book you read was uh, What's the Matter with Kansas? Anybody in here read that? Okay. I know I had some students read it, but. And the premise of this is a liberal writing, What's the Matter with Kansas? This is why, do the, why do all these people in Kansas vote for the Republican Party? Okay. Just over these issues of abortion and social issues, they don't vote for the best economic interest in this author's view. Okay. Blacks are voting for Democrats because of the New Deal. They are benefiting from it. They're voting with their pocketbook, ignoring the fact that many in the Democratic Party want segregation of the races. You understand? And and treating blacks as second second class citizens. Okay? Because putting food on the table. You know, maybe a more short-term important thing for people. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so Roosevelt, we talked about fireside chats. Okay, this is where Roosevelt would uh, address the American people by radio. And guys, he actually did weekly addresses. So he was on the radio every week talking to the American people. And he was good at it. Yeah, he talked to them as if they were his friends. He had empathy towards the you know people suffering from the depression, trying to do things, a lot of action, right? Okay, talked in a simple language that people could understand. Now, not everybody knew he was paralyzed, okay, because they didn't photograph him or video him in his wheelchair. Okay, so a lot of Americans didn't even know. Okay, so. But the ones that did, I mean, that makes him, you know, more human, easy to connect with, and people have empathy towards him as well. And then there's the media, okay? This is an interesting statistic. In four years, Herbert Hoover gave 66 press conferences. That's not very often. Roosevelt had 337 in his first time. That's like one every four and a half days. He was constantly around the media. Okay? They were his friends. So do you think they asked him tough questions? No. Okay? He got softball questions. You guys know what a softball question is, right? Here, here's an easy one. Answer that. Hit it out of the park. Okay? Now that's not the softball that we play around here. We throw fast pitches. And that's what that's what the media's job is. The, the media's job is to ask tough questions. Did Trump get asked tough questions? Did George W. Bush get asked tough questions? Yeah. Okay. And there's usually at least one reporter in the room that will ask a Democratic president tough questions. And usually that person's from Fox News. Okay. It's the way it is. Okay. Um, but hopefully, you know, when Presidents, governors, members of Congress need to be pressed on things. I don't think you guys are following the saga of Governor Andrew Cuomo right now. Are you guys following that? New York governor. Okay. Yeah, because the media is not reporting it. 
Okay, he's been accused of sexual harassment by a former employee. And most of the media is not covered. Okay, and he's also accused of covering up and fudging the numbers on the number of nursing home deaths in the state of New York. You guys, New York, know New York has had more deaths than any state, right? And what happened at the beginning of the pandemic is these old people that were in nursing homes were being sent to the hospital with COVID. And he was sending them back to the nursing home to infect other people at the nursing home. And then he tried to cover up the numbers about how many people died. So basically, by sending those people back with COVID, they were infecting the other old people. And the numbers were incredibly high of people who were dying. This is all coming out that he tried to cover this up. Okay. If you go back to the middle of the pandemic, they were all praising Cuomo for his response to the pandemic. Okay. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Okay. So one of the things, uh, we got one more slide. Okay. One of the things I asked you about on your homework was the Roosevelt recession. Okay. Now, Roosevelt's going to blame this recession. So we're already in a depression. Things had improved. Things start to get worse again. Does that make sense? Okay. Roosevelt's going to blame the Supreme Court for that because they overturned the NRA, the National Recovery Administration, right, that told businesses what to produce, how much to produce, what to sell it for, how much to pay their employees, how many hours, all that, right? That was the NRA, unconstitutional. And then they struck down parts of the AAA, the SEC, and other ones. Okay. So he's going to blame them. That's where we get the court packing scheme. People are going to remember that in the 38 elections. Okay. And then he tries to purge the Democratic Party of conservative Democrats. All right. Now try and wrap your heads around this. For some, you'll get this right away. You've all had government, so you should get this. Well, most of you. Okay. So. A conservative Democrat, they're rare today, but back then there were a lot of them, okay? So you guys understand the difference between socially conservative and fiscally conservative? Social issues versus fiscal monetary issues like taxes. So fiscally conservative would be some a Democrat that felt like Lowering taxes is a good idea to get the economy moving. Like John F. Kennedy cut taxes when he became president. That's a conservative Democrat. It's hard to name him. Joe Manchin from West Virginia is a conservative Democrat. We used to call them blue dog Democrats. Okay? They were usually in the South because they were socially conservative but liberal when it came to politics. To fiscal issues. Okay. So Roosevelt's trying to get rid of conservatives in his party. Does this make sense? Now, what that means is they're going to run in the primaries more liberal candidates, which tend to be more radical. You guys, the American people don't like radicals. They tend not to get elected. Well, let's just look at Kansas, for instance. In the last gubernatorial election between the Democrat, Laura Kelly, and the Republican, Chris Kobach. Chris Kobach is a far right-wing Republican. Now, a lot of Kansas may agree with him on some issues, but he was too far right for the average Republican in the state of Kansas. So what happened? Kansas, elect, which is a red state, elected a Democratic governor because the Republican was too far to the right. So what's going to happen is they're going to get rid of the moderate Democrats, the conservative Democrats. They're going to put in liberal progressive Democrats, and they're going to lose. Does that make sense? So between the Roosevelt recession, the purge of conservative Democrats from their own party is going to cost them seats in the 1938 congressional election. Does that make sense? So when you put up candidates, you got to be smart. Let's just like Roger Marshall beat Barbara Bollier. And a lot of people wanted Kobach to be the nominee for the Senate for the Republicans. And people like me are like, that's stupid. 
He's already lost the statewide election for governor. If you put him up for Senate, he's going to lose because he's a radical. And so the Republicans were smart. And they put up, I mean, I think Marsh was pretty conservative, but he comes off as less radical. And he got elected. Does that make sense? Your party's got to be smart, man. you got to think about this. Okay? Now, you can run an ultra-progressive liberal socialist in New York City, but they're not going to win in Kansas City. Probably. Maybe. Lawrence? Okay. All right. So Republicans are going to have a good one. And we've talked about this, guys. What's going to happen in 2022? Right? Joe Biden won in 2020. And Democrats control both houses. If history teaches us anything, guys, Republicans are in for a good 2022. Okay? It happened in 94 to Bill Clinton. It happened in 2002 to George Bush. It happened in 2010 to Barack Obama. And it happened in 20, 2018 to Donald Trump. The other party came in and kicked butt. Okay, we'll see if history repeats itself here. Yeah. Okay. So on the test, I have 32, 34, 36, and 38 on your review sheet. Okay, you'll see that. Okay, 34 or 32, Roosevelt wins. Democrats do well. That's his first election. 34. Democrats actually did pretty good. 36, Roosevelt wins big and has coattails. 38, Republicans return. Okay. And this is a pretty good slide here. This is the history of the Republican and Democratic parties, control over the House and Senate from 1855. So the first Republican president was... Lincoln, 1860, okay? So Democrats here, 1860, with Lincoln. Republicans, 16 years of control of the House, 18 of the Senate, okay? Then Democrats get in there a little bit, a little bit here for two years, and then Republicans take control at the turn of the century. Democrats get in for a little bit, okay? And then this is uh, 1936, Democrats come in. And really, from 36 forward, look at this. For 58 years, 54 of the 58, Democrats controlled the House of Representatives. So 94 was a big year for the Republicans when they took back control of the House for the first time in 40 years. Okay? That was a big deal. They called it the Republican Revolution. There's a guy, Newt Gingrich, that you can probably thank for that if you're a Republican. Now, you can see here, there's a little switching back and forth here, okay? And we've seen some switching back and forth. This goes up to 2013. So, um, now the parties are pretty even, okay, in both the House and the Senate, and uh, so it could go either way, all right? Of course, gerrymandering and stuff like that has a lot to do with this as well today. Yeah. Good? That, my friends, is the end. So, as I said... Um, so today is Thursday, yes? So the people tomorrow will be here. You'll be at home. You're not going to have to watch the video, except for I'm going to do like a 10-minute video uh, to review what to expect on the test. Try and give you some hints and that sort of thing. Okay? So you'll have a real short video to, to watch for the review. Okay? And um, the test will be Monday, Tuesday. The paper is not due till the end of the week. Friday. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Ten matching, all names, a lot of H's. Okay. Harry, Henry's, and so forth. Okay. Um, full choice, some fill in the blank, true and false, with one point H, and then some long answers. The alphabet soup, did I tell you this right? The alphabet soup um, will be, so your SEC, TVA, WPA, PW, those will be in multiple choice, fill in the blank, and long answer. They'll be spread out throughout the test. Okay. 
So the answer to the question, which ones do we need to know? All of them. Okay. What can you do? You're going to home tonight, it's Thursday night, before you go to bed. Before you put your phone on the charger, which you do at night, right? Open Canvas, open my notes, read through the notes tonight before you go to bed. Okay? Do that tomorrow night. Okay? And then Sunday, when you start to study for the test, so more of it's going to stick in your head. Okay? That's what you can do if you're struggling on my test. Okay? If you did well on the first test, do what you did last time. If you didn't, do more. Yes? Is the module 19 review going to be today, tomorrow? It, it's on there right now. Right. Yeah. The people will get it tomorrow just because they're here. Do you have a printer at home? I, I have it on my own. Okay. Any questions? All right. We got the record second hour, so there you go.